Breaking down Arizona Wildcats football. The Wildcats fall to Northern Arizona 21 to 19. The first loss for U of A to NAU in 89 years. That happened, Glenn Howe, at the stadium on Saturday night. U of A football class of 1985. And, and Glenn, I, I think we've hit rock bottom because I don't think there's anywhere to go but up when you lose to your little brother from the north. I, I, I'm really concerned. What I'm concerned about is how are we going to finish out this season? we got nine games left. How are we going to uh, come back from this? How are we going to uh, emerge as a team and really see who the leaders? We need to have some leaders come out of this, out of this whole thing that's happening. Sometimes a lot of when you have bad things that happen to a football team, a lot of good things come out of it also. That you emerge that people are coming out as stronger guys, stronger mentally, and it's going to help them in life down the road. Is that are we not going to quit? And are we going to be able to battle every Saturday when we go out there? Except for that, we have one Friday game, but we're going to have to battle every Saturday. You know, and Glenn, I mean, obviously this is a game that you don't want to lose because it's an FCS team, and, and in my mind, North, Arizona should never lose to an FCS team. There's just too much, much talent available to be playing at this university for that to happen. But, but that said, and, and I'll go back to what I said at the beginning of the season, this is not a team that was going anywhere this season. There was no postseason that was going to happen for this team. I had them at four wins for the season, and I thought, well, maybe if some things go right, maybe they'll fall into six wins and potentially sneak into a bowl game well clearly they're not even four wins good so it does it, at the end of the day the fact that they lost this game really doesn't matter it doesn't matter in the long stretch of things because this whole season is about evaluating what you have on this roster to set the table for moving forward and is and, and i'm going to start with the with the blocking because the offensive line this is as bad as I've seen it, and Glenn, I'm going to go down just a list of plays from the first three series of the ball game. game. Six-yard loss. Offensive line can't get to the second level. B.J. Castillo on the edge, bad edge block. Bad blocking. McCauley pushed back. Josh Donovan, Donovan Lae, Lae miss on the second level. Castillo, another bad block. Lae misses his man. I mean, it's just I could keep going and going, Glenn. That's essentially what it was. Alex Lyons on the two-point conversion just literally lets the edge guy run in and attack the quarterback. And, and three plays later, he'd actually or three plays earlier, he'd actually block the edge man on a run before he advanced to the second level. There's just no continuity on this offensive line and what they're doing, Glenn. And now this is two regimes. This is two regimes now that has had these guys, and it's the same thing. Yeah, what, what they what the, it, blocking is a mindset, Dave. Is that it's mano y mano on man on man. Let's get after it. And you got to just be more mental. I just don't know if we're we're that tough. We got to be a little tougher. I mean, that's what it is. If you're getting beat, you got to find a way to make that happen. To be able to beat this guy. And I and I just don't see us trying to do uh, finding a way to do it. And we got to be able to be tougher on the line of scrimmage. And that is going to be because it all starts up in front. You got to have those guys blocking for our playmakers, for Stanley, for Castile, for all the guys. All the guys in the backfield, they can't go anywhere without the guys up in front. So we, we got to get definitely get better on that side. And as I mentioned, it's, it's not just the linemen and, and it's the tight ends. It's the wide receivers. We've seen good wide receiver blocking from this program in the past, but right now they just don't have it. And if they're going to continue to run those edge plays where they throw the ball out to the wide receiver, you have got to have better blocking from your wide receivers because the one issue I have with those plays, Glenn, is that they throw, they, they throw those plays and it's only wide receivers blocking. There's no lineman out there blocking no, on those plays. There isn't. There isn't. It's, it's east and west. I don't like, I like to give them a, a compass and say, let's go north and south. <laughs> let's do a little north and south, do some, you know, some uh, stop routes or something like that, or doing some of those kind of routes. But the east and west is not working because we're not beating the, the first guy. And and that's how that pick happened, is that they knew we were going laterally all the time. And he was, he just jumped it. He saw it, he knew where he, where he was going, and he jumped it and went for pick six. And we have to be able to change those kind of plays. We got to be able to change it up, I think. 
Well, I mean, in, in terms of Will Plummer, we, we can go back to last year in the Colorado game where he threw the critical interception in the end zone. And then in this game, his first uh, start this year, he throws a critical pick six. Those are just, again, you've got to grow from those decisions. You cannot continue to make those types of huge mistakes because, Glenn, I'm telling you, I thought this defense played pretty well. You know, I thought the line was active. We talked about the cornerbacks on Friday, and one of the things I didn't mention Friday that I wanted to see from the cornerbacks was I wanted to see them more active in the run game. And we saw that. We saw defense, Rutherford, tempo. you know, uh, coming back down and, and making tackles. We saw outside. Christian Roland Wallace coming back down and making tackles. I thought Jackson Turner was maybe and playing the best game he had played here the uh, at the, the University of Arizona before he made the critical mistake with the targeting, uh, you know, in the second half. You know, so I thought aggressively this defense was playing well. Yeah, did they make some mistakes? Absolutely. You can't have those penalties. You know, Ciro had the, the, the personal foul late in the game that, that tacked on an additional 15 yards on a play and got them in position to score that 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 final touchdown you can't have those types of mistakes but again this defense I think is fine but this offense I mean heck you'd scored 60 plus points against NAU the last three times you'd played them and you couldn't get 19 points you could only get 19 points against yeah. them. that to me that's but offense not defense what I liked about the defense is that I, I saw that we are our, our linebackers were a little bit more active they were getting into tackles making a lot of tackles I saw that you know Hayward was in there and then they were doing they were playing some pretty good football and we have to have that play from our linebackers making those tackles making tackles for loss and getting to the quarterback I really believe that if we can turn this offense and just score some points, man, just score on on turnovers and 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 just because we only scored what six points or three points on turnovers, and that's just just not not a good not a good statistic to have. Glenn, I, w I want to focus on uh, Jordan McLeod. Uh, got into the ball game late and obviously had that last drive and looked really comfortable. My thing with Jordan, and I'll go back to when I evaluated him just off the tape that I had seen, I, th I thought he threw, was th threw a nice, comfortable ball. I didn't think he made a lot of mistakes in the games that I watched him play over the last two years. My only thing with him was, could he come in in the fall and be ready to play? And I think that was pretty much everybody's concern. Is he ready? It sounds like, and at least Jeff Fish indicated after the ball game, that he's ready. If he's ready, then I think, just like what I said last week with Will Plummer, he needs to have his opportunity out there. He needs to have his game, whether that game is next week, whether that game is UCLA, whether you give each of them a game moving forward, because, again, it's an evaluation process. He needs to have his game when he gets to go out there and have this offense and run it the way that he can. Yeah, yeah. Dave, he, that, that drive showed me that he needs to have a chance, you know. Uh, making, I think he like he made a mistake on his boot and then on that first play. That could be, you know, that should be corrected. But other than that, he was poised. He was throwing some good balls. And the one thing I like about it, his threat to run is really, really a big threat. It's bigger than Will's. It's bigger, obviously, than Cruz's. And that I, I like that element to put the pressure on the defense when he's playing back there. Yeah, and he actually, and one of the things that I noticed in the games from last year and the season before was, I mean, he doesn't necessarily run a lot. He'll, he'll use his legs to try to keep himself alive to make throws down the, down the field, and that was one of the things I liked about him. It wasn't like he was escaping to try to get out and run. He was escaping to try to stay alive to see if he could still make a play down the field. And then on the quarterback situation, we've got to be more accurate. We had a couple balls that we could have got touchdowns, passes on, we just got to be more accurate. And, and everybody's like, say, well, you just missed it. We're in the Pac-12. We're playing big-time football. And if you want to be a Pac-12 quarterback, you got to make those throws. That's what makes you a Pac-12 quarterback. And we just got to get better at that. All right, Glenn, there's a lot of noise around this team, obviously, with this loss. Uh, a group of parents started a Twitter account. Uh, they say that there's already division going on in the locker room. They're not happy with Jed Fish and some of the things that he has said. Uh, we're at a very critical stage three games in where uh, the honeymoon is clearly over, 
with this head coach. He's done a lot to get this program to this point. But it, there, it, it, it's, now it's going to be interesting to see not only you mentioned how the players bounce back, but how this coaching staff bounce back because there's a lot of noise going on right now. And how are you going to deal with this noise to continue, to continue the evaluation to put this program back on the right track? Well, the thing that how you si silence that noise is got to play football. You just got to play better <laughs> football. That's what the guys have to do. They have to play better football. We got to have less missed assignments. We got to have less missed blocks. We got to have we got to have less penalties. All those things are part of our reasoning why we are losing games. It's not the coaches. It's not the plays. We have to execute the plays. The coaches are doing what they, they're giving you a, a plan, execute the plan. And if the plan, if you're executing it and it's not happening, but you're not missing blocks and everything, then we can talk about that. But there's too many missed assignments, missed blocks, too many fumbles, interceptions, broken up drives, you know, things like that, making mistakes. That's what we have. We clean all that up, then we can start talking about what's going on with the coaches. But the coaches are putting up, playing out and just play football. That's what we have to do. And who is going to be the leader to corral those guys up and say, let's start playing some clean football, some good football? Well, here's the, and here's another interesting, Glenn, is that, that's coming out of uh, a lot of the noise is, well, maybe we need to play younger players, play some of the younger players. Well, we've seen, going back to the offensive line, we've seen Josh Baker play. He's a young guy. He struggled, okay? Uh, when you talk about the quarterback position, you're talking about, if you're talking about young guys, I would believe you're talking about Will Plummer and Gunnar Cruz, Jordan McLeod being the older guy. But right now, Jordan McLeod, maybe you need that experience at that particular position. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball, I think you mentioned who's going to lead. I, I liked what I heard from Treshawn Howard in the post-game press conference. He sounds to me like a guy that's, yeah, he sounded to me like a guy that, that was clearly uh, upset about that loss and, and is, is a leader in that locker room. I don't know what happened in the previous years, but we focus on 2021. Like We don't worry about all the, what happened last year. I wasn't here. That doesn't really matter. There's new coaches. There's a new team. We got to gel together. We got to come out every game and play as hard as we can and get a dub. That's what we plan for. You play football to win, period. I came here for a reason. I came here to play power five football. Like, I came here to win. I came here to play hard. I came here to showcase and help the team win. Just like I said, my main goal for this team, our main goal for this whole team is to win. That's the game of football. All the mistakes, all the mishaps, like put that behind you. Like If you go and play hard, give 100% effort, it's going to show and you're going to get that scoreboard that you want when the fourth quarter is over. Well, he ain't a young guy. He's an old guy. So I, I think it's very yeah. interesting that we're saying we're hearing people say play the young guys, play the young guys. Well, yeah, maybe there are some young guys that deserve an opportunity. But let me tell you, when the when the bullets start flying, it's going to be your old guys that are the ones that are going to be able to get you through. Yeah. And, and who's going to be making those guys accountable? Who's going to make those guys say, hey, man, we need to practice harder and practice and don't be messing around in the meetings or doing whatever you're doing, you got to be focused on winning games. Who's going to be that guy? I don't know who that guy is. I don't know, even know if the coaches know who that guy is. So we need to find that out, and we will find that out And when we start playing better. We have progressively gotten worse since BYU to San Diego State to NAU. That's not uh, good. good. No, not at all. Quickly, we'll touch on special teams since we try to talk a little bit about everybody. Kyle Ostendorp punted a lot in this game. And Glenn, he put, punter. he put three punts inside the, the, the 20, but I'm going to nitpick. There were three times that, that he punted right the ball and, and they went out of the end zone. You know, man, if he, if he could have downed a few of those balls inside the five, again, you give yourself a chance to see something like what happened at BYU happen in a game like this. So, you know, he's, I think he's doing a good job, but still, uh, we're, I think he needs to just work on better placement. I mean, maybe if, even if you're kicking it, trying to just kick it out to the edge, more rather than trying to get that interior bounce closer to the goal line because the ball obviously has a, a better chance of bouncing out of the end zone if you're putting it in the middle versus towards the sideline.
Yeah, I, I saw that. I was on the sideline watching those, and I was like, this is a great kick. I mean, they were long kick. I think he averaged 49 yards. 49 yards, yeah. 49 yards a kick, so he's booming. He's a great kicker, but you have to be able to pinpoint it inside the 10. Those are what helps our defense. When our defense is in a good position, I think they play pretty decently. They, they play pretty good. They have an opportunity to do some things. But if they're playing against, you know, uh, they're going out and they're at the 25, that's just not a good thing for our defense. And just one other thing defensively, Glenn, is I think there are times when <clears throat> they leave themselves vulnerable in the middle. They, they move the linebackers to the edge and they just leave that one linebacker in the middle. And we've seen in, in, in these last two games, in San Diego State in particular, is all you got to do is get one hat on that guy in the middle, and your running back or your quarterback is going to be able to run for big yardage. I think Don Brown needs to figure out a way to shore that up and not necessarily at times leave himself vulnerable in the middle. That, I believe, is when we've seen some of those big run plays, uh, at least interior run plays, in the last two ball games uh, with NAU and San Diego State. And, Glenn, I also want to send a shout-out to uh, Ironwood Ridge High School grad Harrison B. Miller for NAU. Man, he was all over the place in this ball game, and literally from the first snap, first possession, was in the backfield creating havoc in the Wildcats' run game, and for quarterback Will Plummer, finished the ball game with four and a half tackles for loss. He forced a fumble in the ball game. I believe he had a total of 11 tackles, just an outstanding performance for uh, Ironwood Ridge High School grad Harrison B. B. Miller played for uh, Matt Johnson when Matt Johnson was over there, started his college career over in South Dakota, and now back at NAU. His dad is actually an NAU grad, and so playing in his father's alma mater and really being a force inside that. That's a, game, that that's a game, game ball. Defense. That's a game ball game. Game ball, yeah. We don't usually give out game this balls is, this, this to the other team, but we'll give a game ball to Harrison Miller for his performance there. All right, any last thoughts before we get out of here? Hey, I'm just saying that, guys, you know, I can say to our, our, our players is that, you know, get, get it together, man. Uh, believe in each other, talk to each other, and let's get this thing going, turn it around, and get going the other way. All right, doesn't get doesn't get easy going to Oregon. That is a yeah. tough place to win at Autzen Stadium. And then coming home to UCLA, which uh, I'll be honest, at the beginning of the year, I thought this was a game Arizona might be able to win. Last week, I thought it was a game there was no way they would win after watching UCLA beat LSU, and then UCLA goes out and drops an egg against Fresno State. So, I mean, the, the, the Pac-12 South is, is interesting, Glenn. I mean, Utah lost at San Diego State. Uh, Arizona State lost at BYU. So, hey, who knows what could happen in this conference once we get it going. The South is a mess. The South is a mess. <laughs> the south of the pac 12 12 is a mess all right arizona and oregon next saturday up in eugene and we'll be back to preview that game for you coming up on saturday morning